Hey everybody, welcome to TEDU 436 and 536. This is instructional technology and project-based learning. I know that it says problem-based learning on the syllabus, but our focus will be in project-based learning. Uh, my name is Ian O'Byrne. I'm going to be your instructor for the course. Really excited to have you here. Uh, this course will be a whirlwind adventure. Uh, this is a four week course. I tried to schedule this to make it easier for you to still have a life, but also meet the needs of the course and be better prepared to integrate technology and project based learning components into your classroom. So I hope this course is beneficial for you. Um, I will have a series of videos that I try to capture uh, the really important points of the course. Um, because this is online, I know that a lot of times people get confused or lost or feel like they're not getting attention. So hopefully these videos will be crisp and clear and explain what my expectations are. So to get us started, we're taking a look at the syllabus for the course. Um, this course will uh, go across a lot of different technological spaces or digital spaces. This course is focused on instructional tech, educational technologies embedded in project based learning. Um, so this will be for the, you know, your early childhood, elementary, middle grade, secondary and beyond classrooms to think about, OK, what does technology mean for teaching and learning and assessment? But then also the project based learning components for me are beneficial because they provide a really good way for us to integrate technology into instruction while still uh, maintaining an authentic learning experience for our kids. We'll dig into all of that mumbo and jumbo uh, throughout the month that we have together. So first things first, uh, this course is beginning today on July 8th. Welcome. Uh, we basically wrap up in a short four weeks in August. Um, you'll notice in the course, the way that I set this up, there's a pretty steady TikTok or cadence to the course so that you know what the expectations are. We'll take a look at that um, in a second. Uh, to get in touch with me, you can uh, send me an email email address is there. Um, you can call me. That is the number for my office number. That's pretty much pointless to call me in my office number. Uh, the reason is that uh, most times that's just AT&T calling me if I want to upgrade my cable service for some reason in my office. Um, but then also I, for the most part, won't be in my office over the next month. Uh, I'll be teaching this class and then trying to also have a life before this semester starts. The best way to get in touch with me is through Google Hangouts. So Google Hangouts, if you don't know already. So if I go to hangouts.google, uh, if I could type and read and speak at the same time, it would be awesome. So if I go to hangouts.google.com, what I can do is I can sign in using my CFC credentials. So you can see now that I am signed in with my CFC credentials. That's me up over here. So I'm at O'Burn I at CFC.edu. So the cool thing is if I basically log in with my CFC credentials, and once again, my CFC credentials, you're looking for that guy right there. So if I log in, what I can do is I can have uh, text messages with you. So the really nice thing is you can see students that have texted me um, with questions. The reason why I do this is when you have a comment, question, concern, um, you want an answer, you need an answer right away. Um, chances of you waiting for an office hour or a phone call or an email are slim to none. So the best thing to do is send me a uh, text. So you could see that Christian sent me this note here and then I could say, hey, not yet. I, uh, I'll say, hey, I just saw this. If I could type. So I can send him a message so I can text back and forth. This goes to my phone. It goes to my computer so you can easily sh send me a message. Um, if need be, you can also video chat. Um, so I can start up a video call right away, call you into a video chat, and we can discuss something if there's an issue, or um, we can have a little group chat. So Hangouts is the best way uh, to get in touch with me to triage any issues. 
The way that you get there is you go to hangouts.google.com, sign in with your CFC credentials, um, and then you can look for me using that email address. So that's the best way. It goes to my cell phone, goes to my browser. Best way to get in touch with me um, because I will jump up. If I don't immediately respond, and the only time I really don't respond is if I'm driving, um, then you can send me an email. Either one is absolutely appropriate. Um, don't worry about time of day, anything like that. I'm also going to uh, most likely set up a weekly open office hour uh, so that people can drop in via Google Hangout. Many times I set this up and people don't show up. So basically it's a half hour to 45 minutes of me uh, talking to myself um, and recording that and sending it out to you. So hopefully that's of value to you. Uh, the course description is all here. You can read through that at your leisure. A lot of this stuff I said at the opening of this video. Uh, I'm going to skip down to uh, some of the other components that you'll be wondering about. Uh, there are no required texts for this class. Everything that you need I will put in Oaks and openly online. So there's nothing to worry about there. Everything that you need is already free. Save the money that you normally spend on your textbooks. You need it. Um, so the tentative schedule, um, once again, you'll notice that this uh, is broken up into four weeks. So we have week one, week two, week three, week four. Um, the cadence of this class, if I can pull up a calendar here, let me see if I can do two things at once. So if I look at the cadence of this class, what I'm looking at is the class will start on Mondays. So if I pull this over, I can see I'm looking at my calendar here. I can see that class will start on Mondays, so 7, 8, uh, 7, 15. So pretty much on Mondays, the new week or what I call the modules will begin. So right now we're in week one or module one. So we're going from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday to Thursday to Friday to Saturday to Sunday. The module will close on uh, Sunday. Really, the way that this course is designed is nothing opens or closes. The only thing that will open or close is peer grade, which I'll explain in a minute. But basically, new week will start on a Monday. Module 1 will start on Monday. Module 2 will start on this Monday. Module 3 on that Monday. Um, you will be submitting your assignments to peer grade, as I say here, on 7-12. So basically, module opens on a Monday. By end of day, on the Friday, uh, end of day for me, meaning midnight for those of you that are oddly specific, uh, the module will close and that means that you need to have your stuff submitted to peer grade. I'll explain all that. Um, and then you give each other feedback up until the end of day Sunday in peer grade. I will explain all of that. Nothing to worry about right now. Um, I have upcoming videos for all that stuff. So the thing to focus on now is you've got four weeks, four modules, Module will begin on a Monday. For the most part, all of your work should be done, um, you know, for the module on Friday. And you're going to submit that to peer grade. You're going to give and get feedback in peer grade over the weekend and then start the new module on Monday. Okay. So there's a pretty steady TikTok or cadence to the class. It is a rapid pace and the uh, course is slimmed down and it's organized to make it easier for you to understand and follow. Okay, so once again, module one, first week, module two, second week, module three, third week, module four, fourth week. Okay, um, and everything is the exact same structure. Sorry to belabor this point, but I want to make sure there's zero confusion because the, the month is short and I know that people have other things going on and I'm trying to be flexible and account for all of that. So I'm going to get rid of my calendar here. Or I'm going to go back to full screen. So module one is looking at literacy and technology. Um, we already talked about stuff is getting submitted to peer grade by 712. We will dig into that. The what, you know, that you're submitting is right here. So you have the intro to yourself, module one reflection, unit plan, um, all of that I'll explain in a minute. You're going to give fear, uh, fear grade. You're going to get feedback in peer grade uh, by the uh, end of the week, meaning uh, that Sunday. So stuff is done by the 12th, submitted by Sunday, and then there's a supplemental thing to look at. So you have module one, module two, uh, module three, module four. Okay, 
syllabus looks really nice. Um, let's look at the uh, way that, uh, let's look at assignments for right now, because that's typically what people are concerned about. So, a couple different things you're going to do in this class. Most important is that you're going to be building a website as part of the course. You're going to be building a digital identity as an educator. Uh, you need a digital uh, identity. You need a web space to uh, share content. What you put on that website is ultimately up to you. So this might be a website that you use in your classroom with your kids for teaching and learning. This might be something that is outreach to parents and students. This might be something that you use as outreach to colleagues. It's totally up to you. This is your website. Yes, many of our schools have a spot on the school website for your, uh, for your identity, for your website. 99.9 .9 of those uh, school-based websites are garbage. 99.9% .9 of the time, there's no one there with tech support to help guide you and show you how to edit that page. Lastly, let's say hypothetically you decide to leave that school and go someplace else. What happens to that identity when you leave it behind? Okay, so you need a digital identity. You need a website for your materials, for things that are important to you. You need to have a space that shows who you are as an educator in digital spaces. We're going to start building that this uh, month. This website will not be done. Um, I have two or three websites that I continue to edit over the years. Uh, I have about 400 posts on one of my websites. Um, I've been building it for a decade now, and I continue to see things I want to tweak and fix and change. Chances are some of you will get to the end of the course and then have an epiphany or an aha moment. No matter how many times I say uh, this website is you and what you want it to be, it doesn't really click in until the course is over. That's not a problem. Also, uh, I hope that you will continue to use this website in your future coursework, in your classes, um, if you have other classes that you're taking at CFC or elsewhere, my hope is that you continue to add materials to the website. It's yours. I know some of you will immediately delete this thing, um, but my hope is that you continue to add to it and you're proud of it and you like it and you use it. Um, so the one the first thing is you're going to work on a website. The trick to this is to have a website, you need to have content. It's it's almost like when you build up your resume for the first time and you don't have anything to add to the resume. We're going to fatten up this your website with content from this course. So all of the work that you complete in this course, you're going to do as a Google Doc. So you're going to complete everything as a Google Doc. You're going to share it with your peers and peer grade and get feedback. And the Google Doc is going to be like your backup copy or your holding place for your uh, content on your website. Over the semester, over this month, what you're going to do is you're going to slowly, as your website builds and takes shape and you like it, you're going to start moving content from your Google Docs over to your website. So at the end of the course, you're turning in your website. And your website should have all of the materials that you've built over the course of the semester. Okay, um, so just keep in mind that there is this process of Google Docs to a website. Okay, um, there are a lot of different tools. This will be stated in Oaks. I'll get there in a minute. There's a lot of different tools for websites. I'm going to show you how to use WordPress. Uh, there's a reason for that, um, but I'll explain that later. There's other tools out there. There's Google Sites, there's Wix, there's Weebly, um, tons of other stuff. I prefer to use WordPress because it's open source and you can choose to host your own website at a later date if you choose. Um, I use choose twice in the sentence, but we'll get over that. Um, so basically, that's it for the website construction. Um, you're also going to be using a tool known as Hypothesis for open source annotation. I have a lot of resources showing you how to use it. Um, but we'll use Hypothesis to have discussion about the text baked into the text. Hypothesis is a really cool uh, blogging and annotation tool, a really cool tool for uh, documenting what you read and where you read it online. We'll talk more about Hypothesis in upcoming uh, videos. Uh, you're also going to go through, I said before, there were four weeks in the course. There's also four modules. So week one is module one. Week two is module two. Um, so basically four modules, 
Each module is all self-paced. I'll start you off at the beginning of the week. I will give you guidance on what to learn and where to learn it. But basically, your work in the four modules is um, a large component of the work you'll complete for this class. Lastly, you're going to build up a unit plan. You're going to build a in, uh, what I call an Internet Inquiry unit plan. But basically, this is a block of instruction. So if you think about teaching and learning, you typically will create a lesson plan, a document that details for one day or one period in your class, be it 35, 45, or maybe a 90 minute block, what you want to do instructionally. That's a lesson plan. That's one day. A unit plan is typically longer than that, um, and it's all developmentally uh, appropriate uh, in terms of time and length. So if I'm working in early childhood, I might focus on a unit, which is a week. So a lesson plan would be a 35 or 45 minute block of time in an early childhood classroom. A unit might be a week, you know, four or five days where we're going to focus on, um, you know, ecosystems or trees or insects or the squid so i might focus on one thing for four or five days i can read a bunch of chapter books or show a video or two or we can have an exploratory or we could write or create but the lesson plans one day or one block of time the unit would be a couple days and once again this is all developmentally appropriate so if i'm in middle grades or secondary a lesson plan might be 35, 40 minutes, we're seeing a lot of middle schools and high schools have like these double block or 90 minute instructional periods. Um, so the, the lesson plan might be 45 to 90 minutes. A unit plan in middle grade, secondary, perhaps late elementary might be four to six weeks long. Um, so typically when I taught in middle school or high school, my unit plans would be, you know, about uh, eight weeks, you know, six to eight weeks long. Uh, if you think about this course, uh, we have this class is lasting four weeks. Uh, we have, um, you know, four modules. You could either view my unit plan for this as the whole course, the four weeks, or four different unit plans based upon the four different weeks. I would really look at four different unit plans that I have for you based upon the four modules. Okay, but that's another talk for another day. So you're going to build a unit plan. And this is a unit plan that I hope that you will use in your future classroom. So this is something that you'll think about your content area, you think about your students, and think about, okay, what do I want to teach and how do I want to teach it? This should be something that you find interesting and that you believe your students will also find interesting. We will work the standards into it, but the hope is that you create something exciting, something authentic. We're going to integrate project-based learning and technology into it. And you're going to think about um, how to guide student learning, how to guide student instruction in an inquiry-based environment. We will drill down into this. Um, but once again, the focus is on something that you uh, could and should teach in your classroom. Let me expand a little bit on this. Um, if you already have a unit plan, some of you are, are current teachers. If you have a unit plan that you currently teach and you love it and you, you love teaching it, please use that and, and we will revise that as part of this course. I like that because if it's something you teach and you love teaching and you're excited to teach it, then it's something that um, you will hopefully have a lot of interest and love and really want to expand upon. If you are a pre-service teacher and you have not yet taught and you have another unit plan or what you think is a unit plan from another course, it's absolutely appropriate to revise that for this class. Um, as a pre-service teacher, you need to leave our programs with three, four great lesson plans and two to three great unit plans that you can use in your future classroom. So. Basically, the, the gist of what I just uh, spouted off about is that it's really a good idea to take something and revise it for this class, for this project. Absolutely appropriate. We're going to focus on integrating project-based learning and technology into that unit. Enough said. Uh, general information. Um, please note that 
uh, my view of online learning is not your view of online learning. So it is my assumption that you regularly check into Oaks and to the materials and uh, work on this. This is a short uh, four weeks, a short month that we have together. Um, so the courses and modules, um, I will open and uh, I will uh, lead you through the modules, but things don't open and close. So if you get a little bit ahead, awesome. If you get a little bit behind, eh, get this stuff done. Um, but basically what I'm saying is that you should uh, not disappear uh, and then come back at three or four hours at the end of the week and, and think that you can get everything done. So I would regularly check in. I will be regularly checking in and you should as well. Uh, if you need me, once again, easiest thing to do is set up a hangout with me. Uh, send me an email or an email. Uh, send me a hangout or an email. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'll get in touch pretty quickly. If I don't get in touch within not even 24 to 36 hours, if I don't get in touch with you and I hang out within an hour or two, should be a note um, or an email. Uh, small groups, you're going to be submitting your work through peer grade and getting feedback. Um, I believe in collaboration in all my classes. And this one is, is especially true. I think it's a good way to support you as you work online. Um, I expect that you uh, work with each other in a professional capacity. Um, we need to work on the skills and strategies and the discourses uh, that are needed as an educator. So one of the things is I'm going to be making sure that we talk to each other um, with respect and understanding. Um, I also uh, feel that uh, grading, there's no real late in this course. Um, if you, uh, the only real late for this course, because we have a month, um, is the end of the semester. That's when I'm going to start pestering people to get things in. Um, there will be a schedule set up by peer grade. And if you miss out on that schedule, um, I automatically reduce your score if you miss things by 10%. And then you lose the 10% and then you pretty much stay there. You don't, once something is late, it's not later. So please pay attention to the deadlines that are established uh, by peer grade. We'll talk about that in a subsequent video. The honor code, obviously lying, cheating, attempted cheating, and plagiarism are violations of the honor code. Most of this work you're going to be taking and remixing uh, content online. Um, so we have to revisit what all of this means. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, work for our courses. Um, that also includes sometimes we look at like teachers pay teachers and getting the unit plan done as opposed to you getting it done on your own. Um, but that's another talk for another day. Um, if you have accommodations that are needed or modifications of my course content, um, please reach out to me. Um, you know, most of my materials are all set up uh, especially things like these videos to uh, make accommodations and modify for all of you. But if you need anything, uh, any accommodations, any modifications, or something you need to be successful in this course, let me know. Send me a hangout, send me an email, um, let me know if there's modifications or anything you need uh, to be successful in this course. My goal is to have you be happy and benefit from this. Um, also, a thousand times, I can't say it enough, the Center for Student Learning uh, is an excellent resource. Please get in touch with them if you, if you need any writing support, anything like that. Uh, dispositions uh, and behaviors, we already talked about this in the past. Uh, honor code is there as well. So that is our syllabus. Um, and I want to take you on a tour of two other areas. I know this video is getting long, but I want to give you a soup to nuts tour of what's going to happen. So if we look at um, the overview for the course, right now there's not a lot of stuff in there. Um, my uh, habit in the technology course, especially during the summer, is I release everything all at once. Um, I will walk you through the content, but nothing opens and closes. I don't have you click through things to open up new areas of the course. My belief is that a technology course should uh, have you search and sift uh, to figure out what is important and what is less important, okay? And you'll see that built in um, throughout the course, through the design of the course and the content of the course. That is by design. Uh, it's not me being sloppy. Um, and this will make sense hopefully in a minute. 
So the real way to get in touch with things is if I go to content, I'm going to see a overview. So you see a lot of the stuff I talked about, a syllabus. Uh, our syllabus is available there. Uh, this video that I'm recording right now, I'm going to embed here in this uh, section so that later on when you see it, when you're watching this video, uh, you'll be already in Oaks. Um, but basically, the way the course is organized is if you notice, I talked about we have four weeks and four modules. Right here, you have module one through four listed, okay? So if I click on module one, you'll notice that module one, the first link here will have my learning outcomes, my standards, a, a digging deeper video lecture. Um, so in lieu of a lecture that I would give in class, I have a little video already set up for you that drills down into what I think is important for module one. Um, and the, everything that I talk about for module one is the same uh, strategy and organization and layout in module two, three, and four. Okay. So if I go to module two, I'm going to see learning outcome standards and then a digging deeper video uh, and structure for you. So if I drill down into module one, I notice that underneath of module one, I see read, watch, discuss, do. Okay. So if I go to read, Basically for read, what it's asking is I give you five links here. Um, we are going to use hypothesis for these uh, readings and discussions. I'll explain hypothesis elsewhere, but basically I give you four, uh, five links. Uh, these five links all supplement and support the video lecture that I showed you in module one. So they all support this video here. Um, they expand upon the content from module one, from that video, the digging deeper video. Um, they are not an exhaustive resource. So what you should do is you should read those and mark them up and annotate using hypothesis, but you should also go elsewhere online and you should find other areas. So as an example, if I talk about understanding by design, the framework, um, if I discuss it there if I share this link, but it doesn't really make sense. What you can also do is you could go to understanding by design. So I can Google understanding by design and I can find other resources and look, the internet has a lot of things out there that you can use to learn. And then also uh, what I could do is hypothetically, I could go to Google scholar. Nope. So I could go to Google Scholar and I could also search for understanding by design. And look, there's even more things out there. And I could also, because I learn via YouTube, I can go into YouTube and I can search for understanding by design. And look, even more content out there about understanding by design. So what I'm trying to build in you is the opportunity to, uh, you know, inform your own learning. We all learn different ways. We have learning pathways to success. If you read this and it's, you get it the first time and everything's good to go. Awesome. If you need other resources or you don't, you're not really sure what backward design is. There's lots of other resources online, go through search online. And as you search online, use hypothesis to mark up and annotate under watch. I have five videos, uh, under watch. Um, Actually, it's a lie. The first one is a playlist, um, but basically I have five links to videos to YouTube content. Uh, please go online, review those videos, uh, see what they mean to you and how they impact your understanding about module one. In the discuss section, basically I detail what we're going to do with hypothesis and how we're going to use hypothesis. Um, so this, the first time you go through discuss the first time through a module, this will pretty much make sense, but the assignments are all in due. So once again, uh, for module one, during this class, you will be slowly building, editing and revising a website. Please do all your stuff in Google docs. Please build up your website, move stuff over to, um, from the Google doc to your website. And we're going to use peer grade for submission and review or edits and feedback on our work. 
we will have subsequent videos talking about how and why of peer grade. So that's all coming up. But basically for module one, um, and as a reminder, as a reminder, uh, module one, the materials are coming out today. Really, your work should be done by the end of day Friday and submitted to peer grade by the end of day Friday. Uh, that would be this Friday the 12th. Then you're going to take this weekend, you're going to play more on your website, and this up uh, this weekend you're going to give each other feedback on what they submitted to peer grade. Okay, so if I come back here to Oaks, there's three different things that you're doing for do in module one. First one is website development, six word memoir. Um, who are you? Who do you want to be? Six words, no more, no less. Who do you want to be? Um, uh, basically, what's this website going to be about? Okay, all of that's there. And then also, please start playing in uh, Google Docs, uh, I mean, WordPress and stuff like that. So I would start playing with Word with uh, websites and WordPress this week, and I'll have more materials on that. The second major assignment for module one is a reflection post. So what it says here is basically you went to read for module one. You read these and then some and you annotated all over the Internet and you basically explored what all this means. Um, you went to watch and you watched two, three, five, all, none of my videos um, and you learned a lot. So now for the synthesis and the reflection, what did you learn? So what really made sense and what stuck out to you? Um, not everything was important, let's be honest. But what really stuck out to you? What was meaningful to you? What impacts you as you try to figure out instructional technology, educational technologies, project-based learning? What sticks out to you as you think about pedagogy, as you think about your own content? What's the important stuff? Um, and write about that. Um, you should include multimodal content. You should have links to hypothesis. You should have um, videos, images, all sorts of other good stuff. Um, it is a minimum of 500 words. I'm not sitting there and counting 500 words out, neither should you, but you should really, you should show us, show me, show your peers, uh, show yourself that you did the work throughout the week. Um, so basically, first off, what'd you learn? Lastly, the third major assignment for module one is um, this module one unit plan. So I will explain this more, uh, but basically for the first week for module one you're going to take these discussion these brainstorming questions here open up a new google doc and just start writing um you're going to start planning i don't really want you looking at the unit project planning workbook yet um i know that i will say it repeatedly over the next three four days but really i would ignore this google doc and i would just start a new google doc with these discussion or prompts and brainstorm a little bit you know what's this unit going to be about so you have four modules each module has read watch discuss do read is five links out to readings that you use hypothesis watch is five videos or more um, watch any all discuss explains how to use hypothesis and do is three to four the only time we have four assignments is at the end because we have a final but three to four assignments um, that you'll be uh, completing for each module, okay? Um, I'll go into detail each week uh, at the start of the week on Mondays about what is due for that week, but this is just an overview of the entire course, and this video is already three, 33 minutes long. Last thing I want to talk about is peer grade. I'll have more resources, but peer grade is a way for us to submit work. It goes into a bin, um, and you anonymously give and get feedback from your peers to see what works and what doesn't work and the idea is that um, you uh, can polish up your work before we publish it online on your website so your work is going to start off in a Google Doc um, you're going to work on that Google Doc from Monday through Friday on Friday you're going to submit the link for the Google Doc to peer grade I will show you how to do that then over the weekend, you're going to go into peer grade and you're going to um, review and critique and give feedback on your peers work um, in peer grade. And then it gets all released at the end of the day on Sunday. 
we will explain all of that. Um, and then after your Google Doc comes out of peer grade, um, I will give you feedback, but then at some point you're going to move over uh, that stuff to your uh, website. Okay, so the process here is start in Oaks, figure out what you're supposed to do. After Oaks, go to Google Docs and Hypothesis, get the work done, move the stuff from the Google Doc over to peer grade. Then from peer grade, it pretty much stays there. Um, you get feedback on it, but your feedback and everything is still in your Google Doc. Um, and then from your Google Doc, everything's moving over to your website by the end of the course. Um, so to close things up here, um, hopefully this video is beneficial to you. I will put these sort of video reviews together throughout the course to uh, sort of break down the barriers in an online course and let you know what my expectations are. The future videos will be far shorter, um, but this is just a getting to know you. What we would do? What would we do? Like the first day of classes, um, for the most part, we'll have one of these per week. That is just a general gut check and reality check and expectation check for the course. So hopefully, this time is of value to you. Once again, my name is Ian. Uh, my email address is there. Uh, but then the easiest way to get in touch with me, uh, in addition to email, is Google Hangouts and just sign in with your CFC credentials, and then you can access me there. So hopefully you have a great uh, rest of the week. Excited to get started with you, and let me know if you have any questions, concerns, challenges. Have a good one.